Hello. Hello. How are you? And welcome back to our channel. And as you can see, we're off the Olympic. Yes, we are. Aren't we? We are at the allotment, as you can see. But we've not been down as often because we've been working away, haven't we, a lot? So yes. We're snapping time here and there. We're at our allotment on the internet telly, <laughs> known as YouTube. And um, Hello, good YouTubers. Yes. Uh, today, we're going to um, we're gonna have a little chat, just you and us. <laughs> a little chat so, about... Um, <laughs> How the month has been going for June? So how has no, the it's month? not. It's not June. July. It's July. You're behind. It's the end of July. Well, what date June. is it, Kath? Today. Yeah. Is the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh of July. Time it's flies. Really quick, hasn't it? Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't yeah, it? It was Kath? only like a, a couple of weeks ago we were down here in the freezing cold in the middle of February. I know. It doesn't feel that long. Does no, it? it doesn't at all. And it's just, it's flown by. Um, it, <clears throat> it's been extremely hot here in the UK. We've had a heat wave. Uh, unprecedented, almost. The cooler weather. Uh, though it's, it's, it's quite <clears throat> muggy here at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, but the yeah. weather's finally broken because mm. we're in a low pressure now, so it's mm. a bit unsettled. And we're getting rain, which is much needed. Yeah. But we've had extreme heat. Heat's and been it's, it's, it's not been good for the crops. Mm. Um, <clears throat> we have well, to keep on. We had some pepper drop, didn't we? We had some of the peppers, <laughs> <laughs> chilies, <laughs> chili drop. You don't want pepper drop because <laughs> well, that's going to bug you. Um, you just have to to put them together to ripen, didn't you? Off the stems. Yeah, remember the Murphix models you used to get in the nineteen sixties, where you do little planes and stuff, a little, a bit, little tube of glue. Yeah, we can stick them back on again. Yeah, I reckon. <clears throat> you can try it. You could use flour and water. I tell you what. Don't believe can we, can we anything you see on YouTube. Oh, we just saw a kestrel before as well. Yeah, we did see a kestrel. So we've just lifted the Amsterdam sweetheart uh, finger carrots, haven't we? Carrots. They're very nice. Where are the carrots, Kat? They're over there. And we're going to show people in a minute, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to show you the carrots. Yeah, yeah we've, we've started cropping our carrots. It's all good, well, always, you know... It's always good to crop carrots, don't you? And and yeah, we haven't got carrot root fly or anything. No, because we've had carrot. We've got lots of midges there. We've yeah. had carrot root fly for a, a couple of years on the trots, haven't we? Yeah, so it's put us off growing them. But, but we've grown a great crop this year. That's a good crop, mm. and. Um, but I think the Enviromesh has helped that. Yeah. It's really. The Enviromesh that. stops yeah. the uh, little flies from getting through. Penetrating through. Yeah. Uh, and the, the laying the little larvae grubs, and if they get into your carrots, then they riddle them with holes and make them unedible. Mm. I, mean, I suppose you could eat them if you were in a famine, <coughs> but they wouldn't be very nice, would they? Mm. But people do have to eat stuff so like that. So what else has done well? Curl Rabbi's done well. Curl Rabbi. Uh, <coughs> we lifted some nice... <laughs> no, Curl Rabbi, Curl oh, yeah. Rabbi. <laughs> Curl Rabbi. Or Curl Rabbi, if you're Curl in the Curl Rabbi. South. Uh, if you're in the north, it's kale rabbi. That's a great vegetable. Mm. Uh, it's a, it's like a of the brassica family. Uh, mm. It's um, kind of like it's great in uh, casseroles, and uh, you you can grate it oh, and put it in salads it's and very stuff. Very nutty and peppery. Nutty, it's yeah. Lovely. It's a lovely flavour. So to we've it. lifted great some of that, haven't we? We've lifted the white delicacy, and we've yep. got the we've got the we the blue variety, yep. the purpley blue variety as well. Yeah, we have um, the purple delicacy. Purple delicacy, yeah. Mm. Um, and we've we've had so many Lolo Rosso uh, lettuce this year. Yeah, Lolo Rosso lettuce. Uh, we've so had great. so much in the herbs. Rocket, wild rocket yeah. has been abundant, hasn't it? Yeah. Because um, of course, this time of year, the July, is the time when the crops come in thick and fast, mm. and you start you have to keep coming down to keep up with them. Keep up, yeah. If you don't keep up with them, then they will eventually bolt and go to seed and, and mm. its crops will be ruined mm. so you, you have to keep on top of everything on the plot don't mm. you it's, it's never ending yeah. um, one thing that i would say that we're really really disappointed with this year are the onions, onions. yeah and, and i think any crop that was started off in around about march time and was outside because during march and april this year we had the extreme um um 
cold snap, a really cold, icy yeah. snap that went on for two months. And it, it, it hindered the growth of things like onions. And I don't know if your onions are like ours, but they're tiny. We've never had mm. such small... We've never had such a small, a small crop of onions, have we? But I think also we grew everything from seed, but that shouldn't yeah, really affect it. shouldn't it. affect it, but... Yeah, it, it, we've grown it from seed before and had a great crop. Yeah, but I, I think people who've done things from sets have done better mm. because the sets, mm. obviously, rather than seed, have, have had a head start. Yeah. When you grow onions from sets, but we've also uh, this year, start. which has affected the growth, we've had you know uh, dry weather when we should have had rain. Mm. Like April was really dry, yep. and then we got torrential amounts of rain in May, which we shouldn't have really had. Yeah, you know, yeah, I so know. It's it's affected it's, all of it. Really. It's been a season of extreme weather, hasn't it? Mm. The weather has been of extremities. Potatoes have done really well. We've list, lifted yeah. first earlies, mm. and we grew about half a dozen different varieties this year between. Mm. Uh, first early is second early is a main crop. Yeah. Yeah. But the main crops are still in, aren't they? Main crops are still in. We haven't lifted. And we haven't lifted. Have we lifted all the second earlies? No. Um, most of most them. Most of them. We've yeah. got a, we've got a Wilger uh, pot of uh, a row left. Yeah. yeah. But also we've got some at the patio at home, yeah. which I'm going to do a, 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 rev a reveal video on that. If anyone saw saw my p potato peeling reveal. <laughs> tiny potatoes little potatoes but it proves that you can you can grow uh, mm. potatoes from potato peels mm. Mm. so it was useful for that but anyway um i've got uh, another reveal for you and i'm going to do that um tomatoes yeah oh, tomatoes you, you know i did a tomato how to beat tomato blight video um only last week i think mm. it was wasn't it mm. well now i've just today this evening when we arrived. This evening, yeah. um, I've been picking off leaves off... Do you remember the outdoor varieties, the bush varieties, Legend and the Heinz 1350? Yeah. Which are supposed to be blight resistant. Well, they're showing signs that they have blight. Is it definitely blight, though? I, I can't be sure at the, at the moment. It might be die back due to the extreme um, heat. heat and um, dry weather. Or it might be blight. Mm. Now, all I can do at this stage is to remove the infected leaves mm. and hope that um, uh, that they recover enough to give us a crop. Now, they're the outdoor bush type, like you've just said, aren't they? Mm. But things like uh, tomatillos that we first started off in the greenhouse didn't do so well in there. No. Literally so we moved... Around. Yeah, so we moved them. We moved them to outside, outside, and they've done amazingly well. Yeah, they have. Which we can focus on. Yeah, uh, but yeah. they're amazing. They're an amazing um, plant, actually. But it's all the, all the, my strategy has always been uh, many different varieties and in many different locations because you you know it's it's the old saying: don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm. You can put it, you, all your eggs in one basket, and, and they're all going to spoil all at once. Mm. So, um, smash one at a time. For... I try not to smash any cast, but if they do get blight and I've lost the um, the bush variety tomatoes, then um, uh, hopefully we've still got others. Uh, that what we... have we got? So we can, can still get a crop. As well, tomatoes. Yeah, we've got about what twelve got... varieties in there. So what's in uh, there? Mostly. Um, um, I can't remember the list now. No, they're kind of heirloom varieties. Yeah, yeah. And we've um, got black opal. We've got black yeah. opal in there. And we've and, got gardener's delights. Uh, Marmand, super Marmand, yeah. um, Mar Mariglobe. Golden Sunrise. Golden Sunrise. Yeah, um, a yeah gardener's them, delight and all that stuff. Yeah. And all in there with the peppers, which um, uh, they're doing they're good. Doing well. There's no sign of blight on them at mm. the moment. At mm. the moment. The peppers are coming on great. Yeah, aren't the they? peppers are great. But tomatoes are very temperamental, you know, they're, they're very susceptible to all these airborne diseases and stuff. Um, they seem to be. In yeah. these northern climes, you know, mm. in England. England mm. is not the ideal place where tomatoes should be growing. Mm. It's not like being on the continent or the south of France where they grow in abundance by the roadsides. Mm. And you can pick them as you drive by them. So what else has done well this year? We've got... Um... Um, 
beets have done okay. <laughs> I mean, spinach beets. Yeah, I was just looking really at, the, nice. at the beetroots there. They're yeah, coming on. They're, they're, coming on. they're swelling up. We've got some nice radish this year as well. Yep. We've got various varieties of radish today. Yeah. And uh, we've started picking our cucumbers, haven't we? <gasps> yeah, the cucumbers and the courgettes. Yeah. And the courgettes, we've, we've just started machine, picking them. We've got green machine courgettes. Yeah. And the cucumber is Sagan, Chinese Sagan. Uh, Chinese Sagan, which is the really the long ones, and we've got the Retsina, which is like a, a little gherkin. It's lovely. And mm. um, yeah, uh, really for pickling. Mm. But we're starting to, so they're, they're cropping nicely. Well, you're going to take a tour in a sec, aren't you? Too? Well, I don't know about a tour, Kath. Yeah. We'll show people what we're growing. <laughs> See this? I don't See know. This? I, I didn't know anything. I thought we were having a chat. Well, when I now. watch other YouTube channels of veggie people, I like to see what they're growing. Do you? Yeah. All right then. Uh, I've got a homeboy out on the uh, road there. I can see that. Abundance yeah. of sweet peas this year as well. We've had two wonderful, lovely, beautifully scented ones. Yeah, Route sweet peas 66 you can see there. And high scent. And I'd advise anyone to grow them. We've been picking them every every, every time we've been ages, down here. Every time, yeah. Yeah, it's and we've got the day right? lilies in the back there. Yeah. You can just see them there. And we've got loads of hollyhocks coming up this year. Hollyhocks, mm. yeah, they're great. That's, we've got them by the shed. Yeah. And the apothecary... Apothecary area. garden's gone crazy, gone uh, which is, should be cra a bit crazy, a bit overgrown and stuff, but it's looking great. Um, Leeks. Yeah, the leeks I'm not sure about. The tornado leeks did quite well. This, we're still cropping those. Yeah, but they're not as big but as not as big they should be. How about the Bulgarian leeks? I'm, I'm not sure about them either. Mm. They look like they've got a bit of rust on them. Mm. But apparently but they can still it grow. It, it, the rust doesn't affect the vegetable. No. So. It's the heat, really, I think. I think we've had a challenging year this year, weather-wise, definitely. Mm. Yeah. More very, so than last very year. Very challenging, yeah. yeah. Cabbages have done amazingly well. Durham early have been amazing. Mm. Fabulous crop in there. Uh, yeah. And what about the pumpkin cabbage. at the back, Cass? Oh, yeah, that's Big Max. That's so we crazy, have suspicions it? it might be a shark's fin melon. Because it's gone, it's gone out of control. It's gone a bit mad. <laughs> and it's going to take over the plot. Yeah, do you know what? I was reading an article about... I think it's about... the wrong seeds. Yeah, but... Oh, and I'll tell you what, kale is doing all right. Yeah. And uh, Holland late cabbage are doing very well. They are, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. And we've just started. Um, uh, we just started sowing our seedlings for um, um, sort of late late season sowings of for, um, yeah. things like lettuce and uh, uh, end of summer end yeah. of summer cabbage that can go in and overwinter in and stuff mm. like that. Mm. Uh, so I'll do a sp separate vlog on that because, I mean, it's important, you know, if you want to be as productive as possible on the plot, that you never stop sowing. You mm. just keep keep uh, doing that stuff. So whenever a piece of gra a land becomes free, mm. when you've just harvested, like we have tonight with the carrots, you've got something else to go in. Uh, now, what we're doing with that carrot bed there is we're going to actually put in some carrots. <laughs> we're going to yeah. put, put carrots in the same bed. Um, so we'll get a late season of carrots. Uh, uh, what are you, you going to put in the carrot bed? That carrots! Ju I've just harvested. You've got to put oh, yeah, more you more harvested. carrots in. Yeah, we're going to put more carrots in <laughs> for um, late season October our harvest. The Autumn King, I think. Autumn King's nice. That yeah, thing. we'll put all, Autumn King in if, there. If you, if you home in on those uh, Amsterdam sweethearts, they are very long, but cylindr cylindrical. Yeah. But they smell Little wonderful. Fingers. Yeah, they and they taste so sweet as well, really don't they? And nice, naturally sweet really um, nice. carrots. And perfectly full. Not that I ever want a perfectly formed carrot, because I don't go down that school of thought. No. I like the, the windy bits and the unusual yeah. knobbly bits. But they're lovely, aren't they? They are. They just come out so pristine. It's amazing. They're, they're lovely, aren't they? They're, they're wonderful. They're a nice carrots. size carrot and the the yeah. ideal for. Um, Have we grown Amsterdam sweetheart? Before? No, we've never grown no. them type before. They're we've not... grown lots of Chardonnays, and I think I think it is that a, is a Chardonnay. A Chardonnay, do a Chardonnay derivative, derivative of a Chardonnay. Yeah. But um, mm. we're going to put some of them carrots in a little veg box for one of our friends. Yeah. Who, and um, some other things as well. You know, helped yeah, us during COVID with little meet meetups and, and stuff. Things, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, everything's um, it's coming on great. Mm. Um, I'll I suppose I'll give you a little look round and you can. You're gonna have to Phil. make because you're talking about all these vegetables that have done so well. 
But you're not showing the peeps. I know. The peeps want to see. They do, don't they? Okay, come on, let's have a look. <laughs> okay, here they are. Look at this crop. Out of this small raised bed here. And we've got all these. Amsterdam sweetheart. Isn't that lovely? So, some we'll put into storage, uh, some we'll freeze, and some we'll use in soups and casseroles. It's uh, not bad crop, is it? <laughs> so, I'm going to put carrots, we're going to put carrots in here now. So we cleared the uh, thing, put some nutrients in maybe, and uh, put some uh, Autumn King carrots in there. Just give you a quick uh, look around the plot. I'm going to um, whiz round really because uh, the light's going and uh, I need to do a bit of work. Um, you can see here up the side of the greenhouse uh, we've got these uh, trellises that I've, I've logged earlier in the year and uh, we've got these, um, these are uh, gourds we've got growing up here. Uh, Ten Commandments gourds. Um, Again, part of the cu cucurbit family, but if you grow them up upwards, uh, you save a bit of space. So I've got three of them growing along there. At the back there, you can see on our Hooger culture mound that um, I vlogged a while ago. We vlogged a while ago. Uh, there's our Big Max um, pumpkin, which has gone crazy. Uh, this area here needs, um, there's some celeric and uh, various things in there that need a bit of weeding. The grasses have gone crazy around here. You only have to leave things, look at the grasses in that, um, in that bed there, this brassica bed, little brassicas. Um, but the grasses have, are over, they really need, um, it needs weeding this bit. But, um, <clears throat> in our coal frame here, We've got giant parsley over there that we've just cut. Some grasses need taken out there. And here we've got, um, uh, I think it's called sugar baby, which is um, a, a little tiny melons. Uh, so we're growing melons in this, this thing here. Uh, they're just starting to flower, as you can see. It looks like a male flower, that, actually. There's no female flowers on it yet. The female flowers are which where you get the melons from. But early on in, in the development of cubic, cucurbits, um, uh, they tend to be all male flowers to start with. And then the female flowers come later on. Um, here we've got some uh, swift sweet corn that are c coming in. We put them straight in the ground on the 1st of um, June. And uh, they've shot up now. Um, Sweet corn, um, swift, um, grass, it's grass, it's basically gi giant grass, that's what it is, and the seed pods are the sweet corns. In the middle here is a um, hunter uh, butternut squash that is just spreading out all around. <laughs> you can see it on every side. There you go. Uh, here we've got um, okra. We've never grown okra before, so this is an experiment, seeing how these come up. Uh, they're very small at the moment, so I'm not sure that we'll get anything off them, but you never know. Um, we've got a second early here, the last of our second earlies of Wilger in uh, 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 Liverpool City Council recycling bin. But don't tell Liverpool City Council, because they might want it back. <sighs> Uh, here we go, tomatillos, tomatillos, um, growing in these lovely little lanterns. Um, you can't see anything at the moment, but they're, they're actually swelling up inside there. Um, let's see if we can find one. When, it get, when they get really big, they start popping out the bottom here. You can see. So... They're like little tomatoes. Uh, okay, sweet peas, 
fabulous. Uh, cabbages, fabulous. Daylilies, gorgeous. <laughs> um, onions. Onions. I'll go around here. These are shallots. Uh, not very good. Not a very good display. Uh, very disappointing. Calendulas. Calendulas, so uh, to encourage pollinators to come onto the crop. These are the um, leeks, uh, Bulgarian leeks, but they're very pencil thin. Uh, and they've got what I can only s describe as rust. So we're not sure what to do with them at the moment. Um, onions. This was an onion bed here. We've put some um, uh, melons in here as we've uh, harvested these onions. But you look at the size of these. Look at that. There's nothing of it. Come on, man. That's not what you call an onion, is it? You know. Um, these legend and Heinz um, have got have started developing what well, I can only I'm taking these leaves off because I do suspect it is blight. I've taken all the the dying leaves off. There's still a few left. Um, so I'm hoping to uh, for it not to spread. It is a fungal-based um, disease that will affect, see little spots on the leaves there, um, there, see? So I'm just taking them off and we're in unknown territory at the moment, whether this is these, if you get blight, whether it's going to be the end of them, but we don't know. So we'll see what happens. Um, these are um, lovely flowers. Look at them flowers. These are, um, I think, the purple queen um, dwarf uh, French beans. But they're beautiful, they are. And I think I have got some somewhere. I can't see them. Uh, some more purple queen there a bit later on. Um, on the other side of the greenhouse, we've got... Um, more um, cucurbits, um, gourds, basically. Three plants going along there. Um, and some sweet peas growing up the side. We just can't stop picking these sweet peas. We just have new pots of sweet peas every day. So, uh, more um, uh, cabbage and kale in this, in this bed. And at the back here, We've got our um, cu uh, not cucumbers, a, our, look at that, it's been eaten, probably by a mouse. That was all right yesterday. Um, so these are uh, courgettes. So we've got some courgettes here that are in the process of flowering. And we've already taken a few off, off this one here. So, um, let's go have, have a quick look down here. Here we're, we're, we had a crop of uh, broad beans here and Catherine's uh, covered it with some cardboard ready for uh, putting on some compost on top of that. So this is our no dig area, all of this. And that's basically, uh, perhaps we should do a vlog to show you how no, no dig works. Um, that might help some people. It may may do, may not, um, as the case may be. Here we've got um, some uh, beetroot, um, some Lolo Rosso lettuce going down there, um, spinach just here, and um, this is uh, celery, some celery coming up there. Um, uh, here in this bed, the Catherine is currently weeding and sorting out at the end is um, kohlrabi, kohlrabi, which is a beautiful, beautiful vegetable. 
main crop potatoes in here. Uh, I've forgotten which varieties they are. Uh, Carousel. Carousel. Carousel, this one. Yeah. Okay, Carousel in there. There we go. Uh, wildflower area. Um, just like I said, it's a quick whistle stop tour. Uh, bamboo, still growing strong up there. Uh, apothecary garden coming into it now. Uh, this is a lady's bed straw here, which I should do a, a vlog about. See that? It's absolutely beautiful. Ladies' bed straw, um, uh, use um, as medicinal uses. Um, yarrow here, also medicinal. Um, and these are sticky willies. You can eat these. They're edible, but they they're good for um, uh, they're a diuretic and they're good for uh, kidney disease and stuff like that. Um, agrimony in flower. What, agrimony? Yeah. Agrimony is warding off witches. No, it's used. <laughs> I've been told. Been used. Anyway. Used through the centuries by witches, agrimony. Very healing herb. A healing herb? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's also used in rituals. Yeah. And apparently they used to um, use these flower spikes to, um, to make a purple dye. Because when you boil it, it turns purple. Yeah. It's a fascinating plant. There's a fascinating history of plants. Here we put um, some yarrow in there, which is coming into flower now. A uh, beautiful uh, thing. Uh, Elizabethans used to make yarrow cake with it. It's actually a very bitter herb. And it's poisonous. That's why we don't eat it today. But they didn't know that back then. It used to cure worms. Because it used, I suppose it used to purge your uh, intestines and uh, make you sick. <laughs> Here, look at this. Hollyhocks coming up at the side of the shed. Uh, lovely, it's nearly as tall as me. Um, so, uh, that's it. Uh, I just want to show you um, more cucurbits. These are... Um, there we go. Cucumbers growing up here at various stages of undress, as it were. And um, mixed alongside them, and we've got dill in flower now. Dill and cucumber. Apparently uh, the dill promotes the growth of cucumbers. So there you go. Uh, whistle top stop uh, tour of the plot. Um, we haven't touched on the greenhouse, uh, we'll do that next time and we'll talk about various other things as we go along. So, there we go. <laughs> but, look, we're sat here again, look at that. Perfect. It's magic. We haven't moved. It's cine magic really, isn't it? it must be. Um, anyway, I hope, for, I hope cool. people enjoyed what you showed them. Because yeah. I was busy working while you were... You were, uh, very true and the light's going, going a bit now so um we have to get busy um yeah thanks for watching if you did uh give us a oh, and thumbs thanks up. to all these wonderful new subscribers who have, have come into the into the fold i know that's it's amazing that isn't it how, how this woo. youtube how um, do the algorithms algorithm work? works because you know f for what we had years of sticking we had 750 subscribers <laughs> now in the last two weeks we've had 750 subscribers it's in lots. two weeks yeah new subscribers then, i must say you know we've 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 been we've connected with um various of those channels that have subscribed and some of them are absolutely brilliant yeah there's some in really fact, wonderful no we've had we've had over a thousand subscribers yeah. in the last two weeks yeah that's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that, that incredible? That is absolutely amazing. Don't ask me how this works, because I don't know. I can't... You know, YouTube but I, I is just a mystery. I, I just would say thank you to everybody who's... Thanks for subscribing. Who um, takes an interest and, and wants to follow what we're doing and saying and, you yeah, know... But it's not just you know. subscribing. You've got to... You've got to press that bell icon and you've got to start watching the videos, yeah. the longer videos, not the little short videos, but the longer videos. And uh, that can... Um, that can boost our figures, apparently. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's what they do. And uh, the more you interact mm. with it. Mm. But, well, I mean, 
we're not here to count no, numbers. No. We're here. It's just a bit of a. It's just a bit of a shock, really. For yeah, us. We don't judge the success of our channel no, by the numbers, numbers, not, numbers who are not subscribe. Our, our, numbers are not our forte, really. No, we're not interested in that. We love the fact that we're interested are in, yeah. hopefully, um, giving yeah. you an insight into our world and um, inspiring you to go out and do your own garden. Inspiring mm. people to do gardening, that's good, isn't it? I don't, I, it is. I think um, when even watching other people's channels, it, it does inspire you. It does, doesn't even it? Even though you've been gardening for years. You it know, does for us as well. It's, it's nice to see uh, a different school of thought, uh, ethos. and We enjoy how, it, don't we? Yeah. I mean, it's like watching Gardener's World, you know. I mean, I wouldn't go out and do everything they say on Gardener's World, but I just enjoy watching it now yeah. and again, don't you? Yeah, now and again. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, I don't agree with everything they say. No, I don't. I like <laughs> Carol Klein's programme as well. Oh, I like Carol yeah. Klein's programme, that's very she, good. she's big on wildflowers, isn't she? And, yeah. And lots we met her, didn't we? Yeah, we did, yeah. At uh, Tatton. Yeah, Tatton. Oh, it just We show. met Monty as well. Monty Dom. We and, met uh, Monty Dom. Yes, we did. Joe, was it Joe Swift? Joe Swift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe yeah. Swift, we met him as well. We met yeah. them all. Do you know what? You know, we're, 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 I mean, we're just name dropping now. Like, but... No, no, but you're just name dropping now, aren't you, Kath? To get more subscribers. <laughs> that's what we do. Because that's how our channel rock and rolls. We are the new rock and roll. If you want rock and roll, <laughs> come to the right place. It's Mercy Beach. Rock and roll. <laughs> the new gardening is the rock and roll. It's and the punk rock of us. In some respects, it is becoming that way, isn't it? Yeah, because absolutely. Because it's becoming, you know, a lot material... Uh, Mm, you know, if you look back to the 70s, 80s, it was predominantly male. Yeah, it was. And uh, Flat it was cap. A, you know, there was Whippets. People were not up Pigeons. On, on organic yeah. uh, farming, organic farming. Brewing moonshine in the sheds. Yeah. Sheds would explode. Yeah. Remember that? And very, in some respects, <laughs> very autocratic, that. wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Which yeah. I suppose, in some respects, today it still is. Yeah. Uh, What's your committee like? Have you got an allotment? But allotments are becoming more fashionable now. They went through a very, a very tough time in the seventies as well and the eighties, yeah. uh, where land was just laying dormant. A lot yeah. of sites got sold off. Councils and local authorities very true. sold off very true. for redevelopment. And you know, in in some areas, there's still danger of that now. There is. But there is a big push now on on growing your own food and becoming more self sufficient. Yeah. Knowing where your food comes from, you know, education, the school children, where do they get the carrots from? Where does the, you know, a lot of schools have their own allotment gardens now, oh, yeah. which is a fabulous thing yeah. because that should be part of the curriculum. It should. You know, and the fact that with the, the position we're in now with climate change and air miles and, oh, you know, uh, all kinds of things that are affecting the planet, we need to become more local focused totally and growing you know what i think yeah. people who do grow their own food and and do grow stuff are, think, are, are, yeah. at a vanguard on the on the the cold face of it's of a new way theory. of living yeah. you know yeah. this this way this way of living should become the norm for mm. a lot of people whether you've got a window box or whether you've got a front garden a back garden <laughs> or whatever mm. if you can subsidize the fact that you're growing stuff that can't be bought in supermarkets and you're feeding yourself and feeding your family this fresh organic think vegetables about, think about it in terms of if everybody did that or a, a huge amount of the world population did that mm. uh you know governments would have far less control over us wouldn't they absolutely mm. absolutely it's guerrilla gardening at, yeah. at, at the um, oh that's a great book form, by the way it? guerrilla gardening i got that many years ago um Maybe we should Tom. do a, a book review. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's another that's vlog really we can we can do. We should we could stuff. we should do yeah. a book vlog, yeah. and gardening book vlog blog. Yeah. Anyway. And rewilding <coughs> as well is very important. Yeah. You know, even rewilding on your allotments now, encouraging your pollinators to come. Biodiversity. Growing camp. flowers, that's growing wildflowers, word, isn't it? as well. Biodiversity. Mm. We were pioneering that many years ago, weren't we? Here, and we got told that we were growing weeds. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now they've gone full circle. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so there you yeah. go. What's a weed? A weed is just a flower in the wrong place. A very true, Kath. Okay. Poetry. Emotion. It's poetry. That's what you get here. You want culture? Come to Mersey yeah, Beach. If you if you haven't got your 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 pollinators being brought in, then you haven't got any crops, have you? No. So you've got to look after your pollinators. Very true. Shall we go now? Yeah. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching. Don't remember. Don't yeah, remember. Do remember. <laughs> thumbs up. Ring the little bell, bell icon. Watch the videos. Watch our longer videos as well. And um, I, I hope you... Uh, thanks for watching. Um, we, we leave love, a comment. We appreciate yeah. some of the nice comments that have come through as well. Yeah, leave it's a really comment. It's really nice. Yeah. It's great. Tell us about yourself and where you're from and what you're growing. What and, you're doing, what you're up to. Yeah. If you're growing any of the crops we're growing, then let us know. And also any new varieties. I mean, we, we, we're growing okra for the first time this year, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. Um, Callaloo is another leafy, lovely mm. spinach-type uh, Jamaican vegetable. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. We grew that a couple of years ago, yeah. didn't we? Tomatillo. So, tomatillo is a anything new one. unusual. Mexican husk tomato. Anything unusual, let if us know. If you can know. recommend anything, yeah. let us know. Because we, we like growing unusual yeah. stuff. We do, too. yeah. Challenge us to grow something really, really weird. Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Except for a shark's fin melon. <laughs> Bye. We're going to our. Bye. Mm -hmm.